Hello, my name is Rod. My call sign is KK4HXA. And I have been asked by a fellow ham friend of mine to make this video and show uh, some of the things that I've gone through with my radio equipment and the hobbies I've gotten into. Start off, I'll tell you about that. <clears throat> about a year ago, I got my license. I've been wanting it for many, many years, but I ended up getting my license and then I um, went and got myself a ham radio. They have a HF radio. This is for my office use. And I uh, was really excited about it, so I got my antennas and everything, and even though I couldn't use it yet and that stuff, I was still wanting to learn, and it wasn't a brand new one. It was, it was used, but it was new to me. So I went to hook up my uh, antenna and everything, and my, my jumper to my antenna, and I figured, well, I'm gonna put a board under my window, and I'll put a barrel connector through it. That would just make it neater entrance into my shack for my, my coax. Well, as it turned out, my barrel connector had a direct short in it. I burned out my finals and some drivers and a few other things. And being that my radio <coughs> was discontinued, I had a special order, and it took over four weeks for the parts to finally come for it. And I finally got it fixed and put back my shaft. Well, then, I, while this is all going on and everything else, I kind of taught myself, you know, it's, I don't have a dummy load or anything like that to uh, test my equipment on. So. What this video is about is a homebrew kit for a 200, <coughs> excuse me, a 200 watt continuous load dummy load that uh, I have built. Frankly, they, there's so many different styles and different ways of doing it that I just wasn't satisfied with that. So I made mine just a little different. And by doing this, it has made my packaging so much smaller. I don't have to put it in a gallon size can or anything else like that. This is a standard quart size paint can. I'll open it up to show you. This is one I'd already put together. And, but um, what I have here is I've got brass plates that I put at the end of each one of my units on both sides of my resistors and that way I've got a continuous uh, <coughs> bond from, from both sides all the way up and down and I solder those very heavily and uh, these are a special uh, metal oxide resistors that I have they're uh, they work very well in the oil situation that I have here so this is what I have and then I use 10 gauge <coughs> solid 10 gauge uh, copper wire up for each one of my leads up to the center of my PL259 connector here and then, and then my ground on the side. Now what I do is that I once this is all put together and I've tested it out and everything else then I seal the whole underside here with uh, the hot glue gun and everything else and that keeps oil from coming out on the top. And I have my just standard 250, uh, 239 PL239 connector on the top. But by doing this it's evenly spacing these resistors all out as I have and, and sawed with this. This little can right here can handle that and I have had it online for over three hours with CW and everything else at, uh, at 100 watts and all that stuff and it never even got warm to the touch and I've been very successful and all the ones that I've done so far have had a 51.6 to 51.8 ohm uh, resistance on it. So that is about as close as the 50 ohms you're going to get. So <clears throat> this is what I have done. Now I can drop this unit on the floor. I mean it is readily built. It's not going to fall apart. And a lot of them that I've looked at, they take all the leads and that stuff and they'll just solder them all together and just make a bundle and stick it down in the oil. But it's just, it's not sturdy. And uh, <clears throat> the ones that I fabricated and that stuff, I leave the oil out when I, I um, ship them to them because it just makes it a little less for shipping costs and then you can add the oil. Now the, the type of oils is mineral oils, uh, lightweight motor oils, or, and what I like to use is uh, transmission oil because it's, it's red in color but it has, if you should ever have a leak many years down the road, it will, uh, the red will show up quicker than just a standard oil color. So. 
this has worked out very well for me and this is my dummy load and uh, like I said I do not have to put it in a typical one gallon size can because this con convenient small size it just worked out perfect and it's worked out very well for me. Again I'd like to thank you for visiting my my shack and seeing my home brew uh, dummy load. I have got other projects uh, in the way and another one that has turned out very successful that I really like is that I have a dual 12 volt uh, power supply that I have built out of a uh, computer uh, power supply and this has a standard three and a half volts it has the five volts and it has two 12 volt legs but the convenient thing about this thing is that this power supply has a dual 12 volt rail in it so I have two, two power supplies in one so it's uh, there's a lot of videos out there and everything else of people talking about uh, you know turning converting the power supplies over into a unit well I've got two of them sitting here and I've got all the power I need to work in anything here on my bench this will handle and fire up all the little the smaller radios and everything else and for a test station it is a great project and very inexpensive to do and another project I have <coughs> is I build even though I had trouble with my hearing problems and everything else and couldn't get into it I build computer oscillators uh, practice code oscillators for CW and I'm still determined that I am going to uh, learn CW and I just built this for myself just so I could practice it so this may be a video coming up on this one too but that is the extent of it for right now and I appreciate everybody coming to view my video and I just want to say uh, God bless America and God bless your family and you and God bless all of our troops and bless all the troops that have served for our country see you later